the whole intersectional versus animal only sides, it, it's just so infuriating to me. I mean, I see both sides' perspective. Both sides have valid points. Well, hello there. I am currently driving a very special individual home. I would like to introduce to you someone who I've just met, Cleo. How are you doing there, Cleo? Should we get you home to your home? Home to your home? <laughs> You've had a busy week, haven't you? Yeah, I know. Should we get some blanket there for you so you're a bit more comfortable? And I thought I'd make use of this time. I've been much busier than I expected since I've moved to the US. Um, so I really haven't had a chance to do my formal recordings, which takes a lot of time. So I'm gonna give this a whirl, and since I'm gonna be spending more time in the car doing um, transports for our fellow animals, might as well make good use of the time. So this is gonna be a lot less structured, so bear with me. But the topic today is gonna be human-centric distractions. Now when I say that, I suspect um, a lot of different things can pop in your head, but hopefully in the next 10 minutes or so, I'll give us some tangible next steps to avoid these distractions from distracting us. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just had some messages with a, a few friends actually in a, in a, in a small group um, recently around how <sighs> I think we're all as animal advocates, I mean, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments, just getting pulled into these discussions that some of them, it's not that they're unimportant topics, but they're just completely dominating the conversation and, it, and, and, and we're not talking about advocacy ideas anymore. And this, this is, I find this really troubling. I don't know if you found the same, but um, I mean, even this video could be said to be doing this. So hopefully I, I can sprinkle in some advocacy ideas too. But you know, what advocacy are, are we doing at the moment? How can we evolve this, particularly through our language? As you know, that's a passion of mine. Um, but yeah, like if we're not active, how do we get active? And, and, and what else can we be doing? And, 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 and just fundamentally getting out there and doing something. I think, I, I know for me, this has been a perpetual struggle of how I can best balance my time. You know, do I crank out Facebook every vid videos every week that get a, a really good amount of reach? Or, you know, do, and, and recently I've moved into supporting a number of different things, which I guess I've always done, but still kind of trying to find my way because I've effectively, you know, <laughs> new country there's a lot to figure out which I won't get into in this but I'm just really curious what has your experience been with the movement I mean how long have you been in it um, do you feel like your time is, is, is being spent in the best way possible to, to <laughs> move this big working behemoth of human supremacy and speciesism you know to start chipping away at it or do you feel like we're kind of throwing darts in the dark as individuals and, and, and as, a, as a, a wider movement um, I like to think I'm quite focused with my time. I mean, right now it's it's amazing. I mean, Clea, I don't know I don't know if you have anything to add here, but um, I'm, I mean, I'm transporting uh, an individual who um, I don't know her entire story, so please please bear that in mind. But I believe she was um, with a human ape family, um, and I think they were gonna basically for whatever reason no longer care for her and she was going to be murdered and fortunately someone has stepped up to take her in and that's where I'm driving her right now and it you know gives me chills just thinking about it because something as simple as driving a car which I appreciate not maybe not everybody can do but most of us can do so supporting our local sanctuaries is a great way to build activism I mean Cleo here sitting in the car could be the next you know Esther the Wonder Pig and she could have a million followers and just be building all kinds of awareness around um, how our fellow animals are just all amazing unique individuals with a life and story of their own or she could just live her life and there's absolutely no obligation for her to do that and everything in between but the, the I guess what I'm getting at is none of that's possible without all the individuals you know Uplands Peak who arranged this rescue to happen um, who I had messages with before doing this and um, you know the her home where I'm taking her so I, I mean, th this is animal-centric advocacy if there ever is one, 
you know, supporting your local sanctuary. And there's so many ways to do that. So this is the, this is the, the vegan meat part of the, the video, I guess, because um, I mean, even simple, something as simple as sharing their posts on social media may seem insignificant, but doing that just once a, once a week even, but once a day, it doesn't take that much time. And then going there, shoveling, you know, feeding, all that stuff, you know, shov shoveling up, I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, but just get out there and connect with them because I was just con contemplating this, you know, as I just met Cleo for the first time. You know, time is such a relative thing and life can seem quite daunting, especially as an animal advocate surrounded by this deeply, deeply speciesist world. You know, even within ourselves, it's, it's, it's everywhere around us as well. And, you know, but at the end of it, life is really just picking where we spend our time. So why not find ways that connect with us and hopefully can help build respect for our fellow animals too? Because I don't know about you, but you know, I'm basically a veritable sanctuary in this car right now for, for Cleo and getting her to her um, home. Um, and I just got distracted by a road traffic accident victim, which always kind of throws me. Um, and that's the my anti-species alternative for roadkill. So just have to throw that in. So. The wonders of doing these recordings on the road, right? Um, but yeah, anyway, as I was saying, the sanctuaries, I mean, I, I, there's loads of different, different different ideas, but obviously fundraising, I mean, the cost of a cup of coffee once a month, why not set up a regular deposit? I mean, if, if, it, if it means going without a cup of coffee, I think that's probably worth it, but I think most of us probably have a bit of pocket change kicking about, and if more animal advocates did that, Sanctuaries would not be so up against it as they are because I know, I know, <laughs> I'm not the most knowledgeable in the sanctuary world, but I'm tapped into a number of them and the the pandemic has been phenomenally hard on them and I, I don't think that's very well known about. So please just, if it's not your local sanctuary, look into ones anywhere in the world and, and consider helping them in any way possible. Like I said, sharing posts, it costs no money. So. We're about halfway through this and I've, I've kind of gone off piece talking about a, a form of animal-centric advocacy, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but ultimately I'm just back to the core concern that I wanted to raise in this video is, are we actually focused on ending, tr trigger warning for language, are we really focused on ending the animal holocaust in every way possible? doing everything we can. And I know we have to take care of ourselves as, indi as individuals. <laughs> it's something I'm acutely aware of myself that I'd like to do more videos around. But are we doing enough? Are we doing what we can? Or are we getting pulled into this human-centric drama? I think, <laughs> sad to say, more often than not, it's the latter. We get, we're getting just completely distracted by this stuff. And as I said earlier, it's not that these topics aren't important, but when they've completely taken our eye off ending the animal holocaust, what's the point? Um, you know, and I don't like using this framing, but just so people know what I'm talking about, um, and I'll use the scare quotes. My fingers get tired of doing the scare quotes. Uh, for those of you who know me well know this already, but the whole intersectional versus animal only side it's, it's just so infuriating to me. I mean, I see both sides' perspective. Both sides have valid points. From a intersectional or, you know, consistent anti-oppression, you know, entanglements of oppression, whatever you want to call this position. Yes, we're humans in a human-dominated species of world, so we have to be aware of human, on human relations to, to be effective animal advocates. There's a lot we can learn from that. You know, something as simple as, you know, how we respond to, you know, animals don't have rights, all that stuff. Do humans have rights? And, 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 and having knowledge of human rights can strengthen our animal rights advocacy. That's just one of a myriad of examples. I've done other videos about this. From an animals only perspective, yes, we are sliding towards a human centric movement. I, I, I hate to say, it, I think everybody wants it to be animal centric, or most of us at least, but when we have key influencers, prime movers, whatever you want to call them, writing books about why vegan and they're not even vegan themselves because it's, you know, can't be bothered on holidays. I mean, this is not a consistent movement. This is a movement that shifts towards human-centric 
Hugo, Hugo, ego and hubris. I guess Hugo is a combination of ego and hubris. But when we can't even as, as leaders, thought leaders in the movement, can't even make the simplest effort. I mean, what the fuck are we doing? Um, I don't swear often, so hopefully you can feel my frustration with this. I don't want this to be a long rancy video, so maybe we'll just leave it at that, because we're just on, at the 10 minute mark, so. I hope to do a lot more of these, but for now, let's leave it there. Let's keep the conversation going a little bit in the comments. Let me know if you find some of the human-centric discussions distracting. And what do you think about this new format? This is a bit more unstructured, a bit more ranty, and a bit more <laughs> just off the cuff. So, um, yeah, but I hope everyone's well. Do keep um, building respect for our fellow animals, especially when it comes to language. And I'll see you in the next video. I like to... Uh sing a little bit. Um, Animal-centric songs I actually use for outreach, uh, street outreach, um, to hopefully give them a, a bit of a calming environment um, for the ride to wherever they're going. Uh, All right, Cleo, you want to sing, say something with me? Sorry that I couldn't get to you. Feeling many animal advocates have.